Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. Tonight we're learning what federal agents recovered from inside Mar-a-Lago, including government files so secret and sensitive they can only be viewed under certain conditions. Kelly O'Donnell has the details. Tonight, government secrets recovered. NBC News obtained and later a federal magistrate unsealed the search and seizure warrant that made history this week as FBI agents removed 11 sets of classified documents from the Florida estate of former President Donald Trump. His lawyer signed the receipt that lists each box removed. Among the 27 boxes seized, a set of documents marked top secret sensitive compartmented information. That's material that can be only viewed in a secure facility where no cell phones are permitted. A room with special defenses designed to prevent foreign eavesdropping. Other documents removed were marked at different security levels. Top secret, secret and confidential. An alarming detail, the warrant said FBI agents were pursuing national defense information. The court filing shows investigators had probable cause related to three federal laws, including violations of the Espionage Act. It's a statute that has been used in prior criminal prosecutions of individuals who are in unlawful possession of classified information. Um, and that's a pretty shocking thing to see undergirding a search warrant focused on a former president of the United States. The Washington Post reports that agents were looking for classified documents about nuclear weapons, according to people familiar with the investigation. In a social media post, the former president has disputed that, stating nuclear weapons issue is a hoax. Consequential events never seen before. A former president and his private enclave under scrutiny. An attorney general saying he signed off on the search. I personally approved the decision to seek a search warrant. The court authorized a broad search of the 17-acre estate, covering all storage rooms and all other rooms, all structures or buildings on the estate, available to be used by F. POTUS, the former president and his staff, but excluded areas occupied by private club members. While most seized items are described with just a box number, a few reveal more, like this. An executive grant of clemency for Roger Stone. Info regarding the president of France. Two binders of photos. And one handwritten note. In a statement, former President Trump responds, it was all declassified, adding they could have had it any time they wanted without playing politics. And questions now about whether that is actually an option, that certain documents can be declassified. NBC's Kelly O'Donnell reporting there. Meanwhile, a triumph for the White House with the House passing the tax, health and climate bill known as the Inflation Reduction Act with a vote along party lines there. It now heads to the president's desk. The $430 billion bill aims, among other things, to lower the deficit, the cost of prescription drugs, boost taxes on large corporations and incentivize clean energy. And I mean, it was just hitting the side of my house, just, I mean, extreme force. We are hearing more from residents in Wallowa following this week's storm. The mayor declaring a state of emergency to help with the cleanup and recovery. There have been between eight and 10 minor injuries so far, with most of the damage to windows and roofs. People in the area now left to pick up the pieces. Everyone's in the same boat. I feel bad for those who have lost, like I have one friend who lost all their chickens. I mean, there's been some devastation there. Nobody has a garden left. So many people have come down and helped put plywood on people's houses. My neighbor they lost all their skylights in their house. They got help putting those on. Officials advise homeowners with damage to take pictures and get in touch with their insurance agents so they're ready to go as the cleanup continues. At about 75 miles to the northwest in Milton Freewater, the cleanup was also on after trees there snapped clean in half. A neighbor in the Green Acres mobile home site that is off Highway 125 recorded this incredible video Wednesday evening. I mean, the tree came down totaling two cars both of them belonging to the same family, the Rodriguez family. They say they saw thunder, hail the size of golf balls, wind gusts that reached 60 miles an hour. At least three trees came down in just that one spot, along with an entire power pole. Marco Rodriguez describes how it felt. Well, uh, it was pretty bad. It was, well, first of all, it was like, it was raining hell, 
the size of uh, maybe uh, that big. It was just, you know, it was, uh, it was windy. It was really windy and raining hell and then rain and that's what cost it, I'm pretty sure, you know, all the wind. Wow, and back in the Portland area, crews had their own cleanup on Savi Island this morning when a tree fell onto PGE lines. No word on what, what it caused it to come down, but they broke out the chainsaws to get that all chopped up. At one point, 1,400 people were without power. Now let's get to your wildfire update. The Cedar Creek fire, which is burning about an hour and a half outside of Eugene, is 0% contained. The fire has burned nearly 4,000 acres. Here's how crews are fighting it. Crews tried to fight the fire directly, but didn't have much luck because of the steep and rugged terrain. So crews are working to secure the fire's perimeter. Right now, there are no evacuations, but there are several closures in the area. The entire Waldo Lake Wilderness Area and parts of the Willamette at National Forest are closed. Well, new tonight, it is just another virus, but fortunately not one people need to worry about. A spike in the number of avian flu cases across the country and in Oregon has local officials now taking action. The Oregon Zoo making big changes to keep their birds from coming into contact with wild counterparts. Alma McCarty with the story. All summer long, visitors stop by the Oregon Zoo to see all kinds of exotic animals birds like condors and flamingos and eagles. Sister and brother Isla and Reed were especially excited to see those. Oh, I think they're really cool in that they, um, they have, like, they can hunt fish really well. But in several habitats, the fowl are nowhere to be found. Most birds are indoors and not visible to the public. Signs apologize, and Dr. Carlos Sanchez, head veterinarian, explains. We have moved on level four in our response plan for the avian influenza or the highly pathogenic avian influenza. And this basically means that most of the birds that were in exhibits now are indoors in order to be protected from this virus that it is circulating in the wild. It's highly contagious and could be deadly for poultry in particular like chickens, ducks, and turkeys. I mean, we're talking about that within 48 hours. Some of our birds may get sick, some may not, some may die, some may not, but we are trying not to take any chance. At the Clark County Fair, following recommendations from the state veterinarians, you also won't find live chickens on display. Oregon State Fair officials say they're canceling this year's poultry show. Though Dr. Sanchez explains, People should not be worried. Restrict mostly to birds, maybe some other animals, but definitely birds. So while you can still see penguins splashing around in their habitat indoors, it could be a while until Isla and Reed's favorite feathered friends return. Well, it's better to keep them safe. Yes. It's like helping them. It's like helping yes. us, except it's a different... It's helping the earth, basically. So again, human health risk is extremely low. In Oregon right now, according to the CDC, there are a handful of outbreaks impacting hundreds of birds across about five counties in the middle of the state. There are no outbreaks or cases at the Oregon Zoo. David? Let us hope it stays that way. Thank you, Alma.